Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at Spema Super Positive Black and White Film. Spema Super Positive Black and White Film. This is a special 35 millimeter film that's released through the Film Photography Project online. And it's actually a black and white positive film. So it can be developed in normal black and white chemicals and will come out as a black and white positive image. But the really crazy thing about this type of film is that it has an ISO of 0.8. Now normal film ISOs are like 800 or 400 or 100, but this is 0.8, which means that you either need a ton of light to shoot it, or you need to be prepared to be doing long exposures when you're taking your shots. So in order to shoot this roll through my camera and be able to use my built-in light meter, I set my light meter to the lowest number on the dial, which is ISO 25. Then I took whatever my light meter reading was on the camera and overexposed that reading by five stops of light. So for example, if I set my camera to f16 on the aperture of my lens and the light meter reading said that that was okay, then I actually wanted to go five stops brighter than that. So from f16, I would have actually shot f2.8. Now admittedly, I did find this film quite hard to shoot and my results aren't exactly the best, especially from what I was hoping for, but I did get a few shots that I was pretty happy with. So let's check it out. So this is a long exposure of several seconds in broad daylight. This is really something cool that you can play with when using a film that has such a low ISO. Being able to do actual long exposures during the day is very hard with normal films of higher ISOs. This really is a kind of film that you're gonna wanna pick up if you wanna play around and experiment with something special. It's not necessarily the kind of standard role that you just wanna pick up and throw in your camera when you're just going to hang out with some friends. And now even though I was trying to compensate and expose properly with the film, I still managed to underexpose it in quite a few shots. So I could easily have exposed it by a few stops more. Some of my favorite stuff though is the effect this film has when taking shots of the sky during the day. It's really interesting and especially the clouds in this photo make me want to experiment more with this kind of stuff. It's also super super high contrast as well so I don't have a ton of detail here to work with in my underexposed shots. These really are just straight black shadow areas and this film is just really not very forgiving at all. I can say though that because the ISO is so low the grain on this film is so extremely fine. It's so smooth, which you just don't see on standard film. This stuff is designed to have almost no grain at all in all of your shots. So taking a look at a few more shots here, we can see that it does work well when you're trying to do some long exposures to be able to get a lot of light in there. And taking a look at some of my underexposed shots like this, I can see that it really could have used some more light. So maybe overcompensating even a little bit more and trying to err on the side of overexposure, even with such a low ISO like this, would probably give you the best results. Now again, when this stuff is actually developed, it will come back giving you a positive image on your film. So as opposed to a black and white negative, you're gonna get a black and white positive back. See, it's actually a technical film, so it's not really used normally for photographic means. It's actually designed for work with fingerprinting. But Film Photography Project has taken a lot of this stuff and rolled it down into 35 millimeter rolls that you can put into your standard cameras. Another important note is that you can't use this stuff in a point and shoot automatic camera. You need something that will give you full manual control because there's no way that an automatic camera will just be able to guess the exposure on something like this. There's also just not proper DX coating on the canisters that you'll get of this stuff from Film Photography Project. So I will throw a link in the description for the Film Photography Project. They sell this stuff, they sell a bunch of other crazy stuff that they pick up as well. And if you wanna see all the shots on this roll, including the ones that I severely messed up and be able to use my examples to maybe learn some important details about the film before you shoot it, you can see all the examples of this roll and all the rolls that I post for the roll review videos on the Analog Resurgence Patreon. There's a link in the description to be able to go over there and check that out. So pick up a roll of this stuff as something to to experiment with and get a little crazy with and do broad daylight exposures. Make sure that you have a reliable manual camera or a handheld light meter that will allow you to determine the best exposure for this stuff. And you'll probably have a little bit more luck with this stuff than I did. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to do more roll reviews like this and other video topics on different formats and cameras and news and 
gear and stuff like that. And if there's any film that you specifically want to see me highlight on the channel, then comment down below on these videos and let me know about that. And I'll add that to my growing list of all the stuff that I want to shoot and showcase for you guys. And if there's any other topics or other stuff that you want to see me tackle or learn about and do videos on in the future, then let me know about that stuff as well. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.